So when I released the XI8088 video, I had a few people ask, you know, where's the Nixie tube clock? You know, you made a Nixie tube clock out of the Z80, why didn't you make one out of the PC? Well, the answer is I just hadn't got around to it yet. I had actually planned on it, and uh, this video is going to describe that effort. Uh, so this is going to be a PC um, interfacing video. We're going to show how to interface peripherals with an original IBM PC XT design, you know, an 8-bit bus. Um, and the way we're going to do that, it's going to be a pretty simple project. We're going to use an 8255 uh, peripheral interface chip. So the 8255, um, maybe I'll show a data sheet here, it has uh, three 8-bit I.O. ports. And th those are great, they let you um, interface up to 24 bits of I.O. to your PC. Uh, this is how we did things back in the 80s and 90s when you wanted to hack something to a PC, hack together one of these uh, 8255 circuits and you could have pretty versatile uh, I.O. So anyway, we're going to start with the 8255 and then we're going to uh, add some of my Nixie tube boards. Now the Nixie tube board uh, you've probably seen this one in my previous videos. This originated with my calculator project, my very first prototype of it. And uh, this board used shift registers and K155D drivers to drive uh, four IN12 Nixie tubes. So you'll see here a total of three shift registers per board. There's actually a division there. We've got one board here, one board there, so three shift registers, uh, four K155D drivers, and four Nixie tubes. The nice thing about a shift register is you can drive it with just three data pins, so you can drive it with a clock, a data, and a latch. Uh, and what you do is you send in data in serial format, and it gets clocked through all of these shift registers, to fill them up, and then they, uh, they output eight bits of data each and we send four bits to each driver which will light up the appropriate digit. 8255 interfacing is very simple. Basically you need two chips, you need an address decoder, and you need the 8255. Um, I didn't draw up this schematic, I found it online. It you know, is my best recollection of what we did uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the website I found it was uh, philpem.me.uk and I think if you search for 8255 PC interface schematic, this is one of the ones that uh, comes up. Uh, it's what I remember doing, more or less, so it seemed like a reasonable uh, thing to base this project on. Uh, so interfacing in 8255 is very simple. We've got the 8255 chip. It takes uh, eight data bits. There's a read, a write, uh, two address bits, a reset, and a chip select. Um, the chip select, you're going to want to use some address decoding, so that's been set up down here with a 74138 um, 3 to 8 decoder and a jumper block to let you pick one of those. Um, three address bits go into the 3 to 8 decoding logic up here, and three more are going down into the, uh, the gate enables down there. Pretty simple uh, project to build, just two chips, and uh, plan to build one for this project. Then I realized I already did. Uh, so this is my 8255 board from, I don't know, I'd guess 1992 or 1994 or sometime, sometime about that vintage. Um, here is a 40 pin header. Uh, I've actually labeled out the three um, I.O. ports of the 8255 on it. Um, there's the 8255 chip. Here's the 74138 uh, 3-8 decoder, and here is the jumper block. That's all there is to it. You can ignore this circuitry over on this side. Uh, it looks like at some point I started to add an 8254 timer chip and a crystal to this. I don't know what I was going to do that for. I must have had a reason back then, but I never even finished wiring it up, so I never used those parts for whatever I was going to do with them. Um, over here is a 25 uh, pin connector which I must have intended to use for external um, I.O. so I could plug something into the back of my PC but looking at the board um, I never got around to actually hooking those up to anything. So you know this is you know in, in the old days this is how you'd go about it you'd buy one of these prototype boards from Jane Co. or someplace 
and you just put your stuff on there and you point to point wire it down there to the connector. So I also happen to have a professionally um, constructed version of this. This is something I purchased uh, sometime in the 90s to run my Christmas tree light controller. And it's basically the same thing I just showed out there, prototype, but this was actually a product that a place called BeSoft Engineering made, and this was the Digi 100 board. It had two 8255s, one of them going to an internal header, the other going to a 25-pin um, external connector. The 74138 is there, the jumper block is there, and there's some additional junk that allows it to chip select between those two 8255s. Um, so this is the one um, that I'll probably be using in my XI8088 and just for the simple reason that you know it's a lot cleaner implementation than my hand-built point-to-point wired one. So let's take a quick look at the uh, Nixie Tube modules. So here it is, I'll show it in more detail in a moment. But the Nixie Tube module, um, as I said before, these were intended for my original prototype of the uh, Nixie Tube calculator. Um, I ended up switching to an I2C based um, design instead of these shift registers, but the shift registers have come in really handy on uh, retro computing projects. Uh, so here you can see three shift registers. Um, basically the data goes into the top one and it gets clocked out into the next one and gets clocked out into the bottom one. And then it comes out via a header off the other end of the board where you can daisy chain other shift registers. So that, you know, it allows you to take these things and you could plug another one into the side of it. Uh, each one of those shift registers will have eight bits of output. Um, these K155 Nixie tube drivers need four bits. They're BCD drivers, so, so four bits is enough to light up all of the uh, ten digits that the Nixie tube can display. Um, we've got an uh, anode resistor on each Nixie tube, and then we'll have our high voltage supply connected to the anode resistor. So three control bits come in. Those are uh, a serial data, a uh, clock for the serial data, and then a latching bit. So you'll notice there are three shift registers here, but only um, four tubes. Um, there's only 16 bits needed to run these tubes, and there's 24 bits of shift registers, so what's up with that? Um, the middle shift register I have runs the decimal points and um, an optional LED to light up each tube. So the, the decimal points, there are four of those. Those hook up to four transistor drivers, which will drive um, the decimal point pin in each one of those tubes. Um, the LED drivers, they just go out to, uh, let's see, where is it? Over here, they just go over here to run a resistor and an LED and that would allow you to install an optional LED for backlighting of the uh, Nixie tube board. So let's take a look at the board itself. So here you can see the back side of the Nixie tube board. Um, socket pins are soldered directly under the board for each of the four tubes, protrude out the uh, front side. Um, here you see the four K155D drivers. There are the three shift registers, um, an input header, over here I would traditionally put uh, a female uh, header over here so that you can daisy chain to the next board. Header over here for the high voltage. Here are the four uh, transistors for the decimal points. Um, anode resistors across the top. Um, resistors that go along with driving the, those transistors are there. Um, I haven't populated the LEDs. We see a little footprint over there. You install an LED and kind of bend it over so it shined up the bottom of the tube. Um, and then there's some dropping resistors for the LEDs. I've, I've never actually used the LED option on these boards. I put it in there because I saw um, other projects like to backlight the uh, tubes with LEDs, but it always seemed to me like a weird mixing of technology to have LED and uh, Nixie tube together, so I've never actually done it. Front side of the board, um, just got the four Nixie tubes that kind of plug into these socket pins. Like so, um, these socket pins you can buy at Mauser. Uh, some people call them Mauser pins. And you just take your tube and plug it into those uh, sockets. Okay, we're ready to uh, try this uh, out. The Nixie tube board is uh, 
wired up here. Um, here's my monitor, high voltage power supply sitting over the side. This yellow wire is the 140 some odd volts. Uh, black wire here is ground to the power supply. There's a cable here that runs back to the 8255 board, which is plugged into the uh, back plane. So red wire here supplies 5 volt from a uh, drive power connector into the Nixie tube display boards to run the logic on the boards. So let's uh, turn on. RC2014 should start booting. There we go. Uh, let's hit the high voltage supply. It's uh, displayed some random junk whatever's uh, in the uh, shift registers. Uh, let's run our basic program, GW. Let's DOS basic nix clock dot bass. Okay, it started running. There we go. We've got the current time displayed, which is uh, 5.48 uh, p.m. So this looks uh, this looks successful. Um, next thing to do is going to be to mount it in the case. Okay, so here we've got everything permanently installed and completed. Um, two Nixie tube display boards mounted to the front panel with plastic screws cable that hooks up to the 8255 board to drive them and inside of this plastic box I have placed one of my uh, high voltage power supplies and powered it from the 12 volt supply from a floppy connector so let's try this out let's power up the XI8088 see some random junk has been displayed there, it's just what was in the buffers. Uh, it's booting up. BIOS booting over there. And I have uh, written a TSR program, Terminate and Stay Resident program, using uh, Turbo Pascal so that when the system boots, AutoExec can automatically run my Nixie clock. And it's displayed, and we can go and start doing other things with the computer such as running AdLib Jukebox. Well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, NixieTube clock demo. Um, Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.